All right, well, if you've, if you've been watching for a bit or if we've ever talked, one of the things I talk a lot about is the fact that artists can't really make what they don't have. They can't give what they don't have. And so a lot of what I want to try to share as we kind of walk through uh, what it looks like to be an independent artist, a Christian artist, somebody who's trying to create to bring glory to the creator, what are some of the resources that I use to really develop spiritually and what that looks like for me? So I wanted to dive into three books that I think if you haven't read these yet, I strongly recommend that you put them on your reading list for this year. Um, But also stay tuned because I want to talk a little bit about uh, why that's important, why reading is important, especially when it comes to songwriters, creators, stuff like that. So first things first, let's dive into the first book. Uh, This is one of my all-time favorite books. It's a really simple read. And if you know me at all, you probably know exactly what book I'm going to recommend. But it is Psalm 23 Through the Eyes of a Shepherd. This book is fantastic. I can't uh, rave about it more. Um, it It is exactly what it says. It's it's a look at Psalm 23 through the eyes of a shepherd. It's about uh, the shepherd named Philip Keller and his research as a shepherd and as a follower of Jesus. And he uses this imagery uh, to really just draw you into the truths that are found in Psalm 23. Uh, literally, I've had people read this book and, and they're weeping and I'm probably weeping along with them. Uh, One thing I also love about this book is if you're reading it and you are a shepherd yourself, maybe you're a pastor or, uh, you know, a a small group leader, or you lead any sort of person at all, you have a shepherding role with those people. And so the beautiful way you can read this book is you can read it as someone who leads others, but, and as, as one who has the good shepherd that is Jesus. And I think that's super cool and really just brings to light some of the analogies in this book, especially when it comes to self-sacrifice and leaning into uh, the murk and the mire uh, that the sheep kind of go through and really getting involved in the daily life. And I think uh, for me, it's been really eye-opening and just how much the Lord uh, cares for us. Uh, you know, the first, it literally walks line by line through Psalm 23 I was talking about it with some friends uh, this week and just how shifting uh, and life impacting it can be when you really view uh, Jesus as the true and better shepherd, what that looks like, his authority over your life, his claim over the things that he's doing in your life, and the, and also the care that he has for you. So A Shepherd's Look at Psalm 23, I highly recommend this book. Again, all the links are going to be uh, below this video, and I, I suggest clicking that and going ahead and ordering it and putting it on the desk so that you read it right away. Um, Staying with the theme of Psalm 23, uh, I want to jump into like, this one's a a more devotional type content. In fact, uh, the author describes it as uh, just sitting across the table uh, from him, and that is Life Without Lack. Uh, This is by Dallas Willard, uh, a great theologian and thinker, but this is probably a little different than many other books that you might have read if you're familiar with Dallas Willard at all, uh, in the sense that it's not super, uh, well, I would say it's theologically heavy and philosophical, but it also has a lot of um, very conversational type uh, content in the book itself. Like I said, at the very intro of the book, he, he says, I want this to feel like we're sitting at a table. And that's what I love about it, because uh, the part I've really struggled with with Psalm 23, that 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 verse in particular is uh, that I have no need or I have no want or I am without lack, that second part of verse two. And I think a lot of us have that issue with that verse because we don't really know what it means. And so this book really dives into uh, the idea of living a life of abundance, a life without lack uh, when you walk with Jesus, what that looks like, the implications of that, and then even how that extends past yourself into the people that you interact with. So that is Life Without Lack uh, by Dallas Willard. And the next one's just a, a fun one. Uh, and it is by one of my favorite artists, uh, Andrew Peterson, and it is Adorning the Dark. This is like a memoir of sorts on vocation, faith, calling, a lot of things that you probably wrestle with the same with me. Like, what, am I doing the right thing? And this walks through his his life. It's kind of a sequel of sorts to another book he had written that I felt like was a letter to me, but I wanted to recommend this one because I think it has a lot to do with uh, just the life of an artist and what it looks like to live into your calling and into the thing that you think the Lord has called you to do and what that looks like and the things that you'll wrestle with. So uh, Adorning the Dark, Andrew Peterson. Also, if you haven't heard any Andrew Peterson, I strongly suggest you go out and listen uh, to his music. It is uh, killer. So again, quick uh, review. 
That is Psalm 23. Uh, A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23. Life Without Lack by Dallas Willard. And Adorning the Dark by Andrew Peterson. Uh, All of these books will be linked uh, below this video. Uh, But let me talk a, a minute about why I think it's important that you read and read devotional type content, not just fictional. Now, fictional content is great. If I'm being honest, I don't read a ton of fiction and that's probably to my detriment. Um, And I think nonfiction is great uh, just as far as like self-help books and stuff like that. But devotional content is a little bit different in the sense that you are literally feeding your soul. You're going to scripture and using this text as a a kind of a, a sidecar to scripture and diving deeper. And I think as artists, a lot of times we just want to jump in to make something. I know I do. I just want to jump in, start making something, being productive, marketing a thing, doing whatever I need to do to to put out what I'm trying to say into the world. But I think reading devotional type content, diving into deep into what the Lord says in his word really causes us to pause, to think about what we should say, what we shouldn't say. Uh, I also heard... Uh, Drew Holcomb talk about this as he kind of talked about songwriting and being a collector of words. And now I don't think we should just read devotional content so that we collect words and collect phrases and collect thoughts, but I do think it is part of it. We, we, we begin to speak and talk and sing about what we're digesting. And so we need to make sure that we're digesting the right things. So I just want to encourage you, maybe after this video is done, after uh, we're done talking and hanging out today, that you would just take a second, pick up one of these books or pick up another book and just read. Begin to feed your soul because you can't give what you don't have. I can't say it enough. And when it comes to being an artist and a Christian artist, you want to make sure you're pushing out truth and pushing out grace and pushing out mercy and pushing out all these things that the Lord has extended to us. But we can't do that if we haven't first internalized it. So go pick up those books, go pick up some other books. Uh, and I would encourage you to take, take a look at them, take a second, read, digest, and maybe ask the Lord uh, what he's asking of you uh, today.